for Juan Augustin Palazuelos. Thoughts, memories, dreams continued in the clamp skull day after day. She re-enters as reported speech, and the hero of the dream has his own subconscious, his subjective memory of those encounters. Breakfast at the Savoy, the intruder, the view from a high flat roof of river and dead Iowa trees. The seasons waver with the slides. He makes one move, a two-page flicker book. Two-page flicker book. This is a great love of small toy-like contraptions on the part of this man. If you are thinking of Tom Rayworth, uh, quick, fun, impish, head always moving, darting expression that had the same speed as his poems, brilliant mugging, laughter, a certain lightness and abhorrence of the ponderous, affection, strength, wit. There's another aspect that uh, somewhat belies those. It might not be the first thing you think of. You know, I, I could talk about that tonight. I could tell you he was tenacious, uncompromising. I could tell you that to say Rayworth is uncompromising is like calling the Atlantic Ocean a body of water. <laughs> his distaste for Kant, his refusal to get trapped into a critical or analytical vantage, his refusal to step into any place that might drag his brain into the prevailing cloud of slowness and careerism, his pride, the things he wouldn't do, wouldn't let his life become, how his short, sudden poems, hopping and mirthful, funny, light, also resemble the mazurkas of Chopin, guns buried in flowers, Robert Schumann called them. I could talk about uh, Tom's feisty relationship with mortality, ferocious. I could mention the dagger he had tattooed on his arm the poem about Hans Blix. I could say that underneath, the man wasn't exactly whipped cream. But uh, I, I, I don't think I'm gonna talk about that tonight. <laughs> yeah. Let's just remember his mirth, the bright-eyed levity, the brilliance, the alacrity. Those, those are a better idea tonight, although they were hard won. TV, toads of Lake Titicaca, 200 to the acre, one billion toads in Lake Titicaca. <laughs> I have one early memory of Tom that I'll tell you, which actually uh, is utterly counter to what Lynn just said about the weather. Um, so who knows, you know, maybe I just invented the whole thing, but well, it's an early memory of Tom, 1976. I drove him out to Bolinas to read in a series Andy Berlin and I ran. I believe he read the log book. He spent the night in the shack Berlin and I lived in. And really early the next morning, we piled into my ancient Chevy wagon and headed back to San Francisco. Tom often came across as shy in those days. He'd bob his head up and down a lot, eyes sparkling, laughing and agreeing, and looking hyper alert and inserting monosyllables. <laughs> Not many words. That morning it was really foggy and cold. One of those bleak West Marin mornings, fog thick as mud and just yucky. Tom said, I love this kind of weather. <laughs> exactly what I want, it's just like home. <laughs> And he proceeded to talk in delight nonstop. It came out like a fire hydrant for the rest of the trip, as if we'd known each other forever. <laughs>